The summer workday begins for Tim Mitchison by getting his books ready to go and adjusting his jewelry collection better known as bird ID bands. Before he can begin work, he needs to gather his research material. He's working on a nationwide federally funded project to capture and ban mourning doves. And the objective is to ban at least 650 mourning dove in the state um, in three different regions um, in order to gather uh, harvest data, um, age, and sex vulnerability and gives us a good estimation on the population. The doves are, understandably, a little reluctant to cooperate, but Mitchison has worked with them long enough to understand the birds and to know a lot about any one dove within a matter of moments. I can tell it's this year's bird because if you open up the wing, you can see all the brown edgings on the end of these primary coverts and secondary coverts tells you it's a young of the year bird. So this year's bird already has a band on it, so I've already seen this bird once. Recapturing doves is a natural symptom of banding hundreds upon hundreds of birds in the Socorro area alone since the program began in 2008. And Mitchison's knowledge about these birds goes beyond their physical traits. With his banding equipment close at hand, he demonstrates some of what he's learned about dealing with doves. And then if you hold them upside down, it really calms them down quite a bit. Not all of the birds he is trapping and banding are mourning doves. White wing doves also find their way into the traps. And Mitchison says, although the federal research is aimed at the mourning dove, as long as the opportunity exists to gather information on their white wing cousins, it would be foolish to pass up the opportunity. White wing dove are expanding into Mexico. We're not sure what the reasons are, but they seem to become a, an urban bird. Um, but I'm starting to see them in places where you would never imagine uh, seeing a white winged dove, like up in the, the Hamas Mountains and in farther areas north. Each dove, whether white wing or mourning, gets fitted with a band around its leg, and the band is recorded to note the age, location, and at times, gender of the bird. That gender question isn't always easy with the doves, and Mitchison's experience and understanding of the birds is again apparent. On these males, See how the top of the head is that blue slate gray? The top of the head and the back of the neck. And if you look at the chest, you can see a little purple tinge inside the, the breast feathers there. Fitting the bands is an art form. Mitchison says it is highly unlikely that a bird would ever grow to a size that it would create a problem with a band. But a dove could easily lose a band that isn't applied properly or is simply too big for the bird. See on this bird, this is a real young dove. Three A bands just slide right off, so that means I need to go to the smaller size band. 2008 was the first major year we banded throughout the state. Uh, we banded approximately 1,200 morning dove and about 1,200 white winged dove. Mitchison banded roughly half of those birds himself. He says it is important that we understand all that we can about this particular species. Morning dove is the number one small game species hunted in the U.S. and also is probably the number one game bird hunted in New Mexico. With his opportunity for close contact, Mitchison has become more than book smart about these birds. He's developed a sense for not just how they act, but how they think. These young birds, a lot of times they'll just sit there. And, believe it or not, this little bird contributes huge sums of money to wildlife restoration programs across the country due to the large amount of ammunition purchased annually during dove hunting season through the Wildlife Restoration Program of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So sportsmen are paying for this program and this information is used to uh, benefit the species management of morning dove and is also a side benefit for for white winged dove. While he has spent the past few years banding birds at a fairly remarkable pace, that is really only half the battle to gather information. If hunters don't do their part, the success rate falls off quickly. The odds of getting a band return on a morning dove are pretty small, uh, anywhere from one to three percent. If we get three percent return rate, that's really good. So we have to band a lot of birds just to get a little information. It's very important that hunters do look at those legs on the dove that they harvest and if they do find a band on that bird, 
please report it. He says it isn't difficult since they don't need the actual band, just the information, and that can be relayed by phone or online to the Department of Game and Fish.